Hello and welcome to the Kim Iverson Show. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I get some criticism that I have one side of the perspective when it comes to the Israel-Palestine conflict on this show. And I think that is a fair enough criticism. I think um, I did have one uh, pastor, uh, more of a, I would say like a Zionist Christian pastor who was on the show at one point. But other than that, uh, I think it's a fair criticism. I don't have enough people on, a lot of times it's because they won't come on to the show. They won't talk to me. Uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of of no fault of some of us when there's so much, when the political divide is so strong in this country that people won't talk to each other, which is really unfortunate. But today, um, I'm really excited about this conversation. There is someone who we go back and forth on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. I'm not, I, I'm not going to fall into it. I'm just going to call it Twitter for the rest of ever. Uh, we go back and forth on Twitter a bit. And, um, and, and so he kind of gave me the criticism and said, hey, you know, you don't have enough people on. So I've invited him onto the show. He's a very brilliant guy. Invited him on the show to have this discussion slash debate. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, but Greg Magershack is going to be joining us. And he is a very, very impressive person. Like I said, very, very smart, clearly very intelligent. Went off to college, for example, when he was 14 years old. Uh, got degrees in mathematics and computer science. He is a, a concert pianist and has traveled around the world playing in Carnegie Hall starting at the age of seven years old. So uh, maybe even some sort of a prodigy. But he's going to be joining us and we're going to find out a little bit more about him when we get into the conversation. He is the founder and CEO of Cubix and Intercoin. Um, he's created software companies and, and uh, you know, so he's just a really impressive guy. So we're going to talk and we're going to get into the Israel-Palestine debate. We've got this broken up into four different sections we're going to try to get through today. So we're going to try to talk about the British mandate, the history of Zionism. I allowed, by the way, Greg to choose the four points that he felt were the most important to cover today. So we're going to go through the, the history of the British mandate and uh, the partition plan, the conflict. Um, he says that the real roots of this conflict are it is just meddling by these larger countries like the USSR. We're going to talk about that. Also, he says that um, the real that that terrorist groups and Hamas are benefiting from this and civilians are paying the price from from these for, for these terrorist groups. We're going to talk about that as well as his solution to the conflict. He is a libertarian. So, um, you know, we agree on a lot of things when it, in, on many different topics. So this will be a really great conversation. Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Lovely to be here. <laughs> First of all, so tell us about you a little bit before we get into this debate. Um, tell us about you. Where are you from? Are you an American? I am an American. Um, my family are Russian Jews uh, who immigrated from Russia when I was a little baby, one year old. So I grew up in New York. Um, definitely got a taste of entrepreneurship. I love the ability to start companies in this country. I feel like there's so much freedom um, and so much ability to take a risk, you know, in as opposed to other places. So I, I love a lot of you know, what the USSA has to offer. And at the same time, uh, you know, I am aware, I am a libertarian. I, I've come to see a lot of the uh, the big tech and the big governments uh, lording it over the people. Sometimes the big tech has the technology. Like Kim, later, I'm probably going to give you our technology, open source, so you could record your videos with, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, Elon Musk, uh, you know, owns uh, Twitter with a bunch of sovereign wealth funds. Um, Mark Zuckerberg owns Facebook and so on it goes. And so I see a lot of these power structures and concentrations of power. And when it comes to war, I'm just like, really like, it makes me angry because people are stuck in a paradigm where these politicians fail to create peace. And you've seen this in Ukraine, you've seen this in a lot of places right. and people pay the price. And you only have this uh, sort of false dichotomy of like, well, you must be a Putin stooge or you must be this. And it's like, well, no, I'm on the side of civilians. And I want real solutions so that people can self-organize and opt out of this terrible situation. Right. So I about me, I've built uh, open source platforms that are alternatives to Twitter, to Facebook, to big tech. And uh, I believe that we should have the technology by the people for the people to self-organize. And one more thing, uh, just recently, Balaji, if anyone knows Balaji with his network state, invested in our company uh, because there's this big group of people. I'm part of this movement of having people organize in other ways than nation states and big mm -hmm. tech. 
So that's what I do. Okay. So are you, so you are, uh, you live in where New York, did you say? Uh, yeah. So you're in New York, you're Jewish. Are you, are, are you also, do you hold dual citizenship? No, I do not. Okay. But do you go to Israel often or how many times have you been over there? Um, I've been over there a fair amount. Um, part of my family went to Israel uh, rather than the United States. So my cousins, I have cousins there. I also just came back just yesterday. I was in Jordan, actually, in, in Amman. Uh, so <laughs> oh, wow, I okay. to show what it looks like. Yeah, I picked up a souvenir. <laughs> I was in the airport. Um, a lot of the countries in the Middle East, including Dubai, where I was, okay, the UAE, have been built up very recently. They're very recent creations. And it's right. more impressive than Tel Aviv in Dubai. So you know a yeah. lot of the things that people say it all of it is created artificially a lot of it uh since the ottoman empire and so you know i i do believe that free markets and people investing in these things are much better yeah. institutions than what we have with these wars okay so let's get started on this discussion slash debate so you and i just to start off you and i do not agree on this conflict right i mean that's that's the sense of, that's the uh the feeling i'm getting <laughs> from you is we don't agree i'm an anti-zionist what is it that you disagree like what is your position overall on the conflict well i think my position on this conflict is actually very similar to your position on the ukraine conflict okay um, there you saw a lot of the other sides right you saw both sides and i saw you on rising right uh, i'm sure many people would uh, call you a putin stooge or something based on what, <laughs> right. right sure so, I could totally understand now these terms, okay, Zionist and so on, there's extremists on both sides. Okay, so I just want to put it out there. Um, I'm okay with like mild anti-Zionists. I'm okay with mild Zionists, okay. Um, but the idea of Zionism in general, to me is a little bit weird because uh, people are just like Israelis. They're born in Israel, you know, they have nowhere to go. They, they were born there. A lot of them are descended from refugees who came from Arab countries. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about that. They can't go back to Europe because they weren't ever from Europe. Right. Um, in fact, most people don't know this, but most of Israel is not descended from Ashkenazis, Europeans. They're descended from Arab Jews, people from North Africa, people from uh, even Persia, Iran. And so, you know, people just have this idea because they internalize the white guilt in a way because yeah. they, they conquered entire continents that somehow they think, oh, it must be these white people. Well, actually, it's not. So it's just, what do I have a problem with? I think I have a problem with the definitions have been completely obscured, and it's hurting Palestinians, and it's hurting Jews as well. And I don't think it helps anybody. So I, I do think that anti-Zionism in its most extreme form uh -huh. actually hurts uh, everybody. And what would you say is the most extreme form of anti-Zionism? Well, the most extreme form would be if you ask them, well, what should Israel do? They would say it's simple. Dismantle the country uh, and then all of you Jews move back to where you came from. And the most extreme version will say, well, they're not real Jews. They're descended from Khazars. But then also these same people, sometimes if they're Muslim, they'll say no, but they killed John the Baptist and they are descended from Jews after all. It could go on and on. But okay. I think anything that has to do with like controlling everything and 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 just killing everyone and being behind every <laughs> single war. I mean, I've never, I, 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 that would be very extreme. I don't know if I've ever heard of anybody saying kill them all. Right. I mean, I, I hear, I do hear, um, the, an extreme idea of dismantle and yeah, deport all of the Jews who are there someplace else. I have to say that is a very extreme position. When I've even, when I was in Palestine, speaking to Palestinians, I didn't even hear that from, from them. I did hear it from like one person in Palestine, like one Palestinian kind of gave me this very radical extreme viewpoint, but that was one person. Everybody else was like, no, that's crazy. We're not gonna deport all of these people back to wherever they came from when many of them were now born in Israel. So I just looked it up. It's 32% are Ashkenazi uh, in Israel at this point. The other the other two would be Sephardic and uh, Mizrahi. Mizrahi, but Mizrahi is, is that from, from Africa? East. Is that Mizrahi literally means Eastern in Hebrew, and uh -huh. they are from uh, Persia. They are from Iraq. They are okay. from Yemen. Then where are the Sephardics from? Sephardi means Spanish, but it's actually a catch-all oh. term for North Africa. So the Maghreb region, Libya, um, Tunisia, Morocco. 
Okay. A lot okay. of these Jews are from there and they had to run, same as the Palestinians during the Nakba for various reasons, or Palestinians from Kuwait. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were ethnically cleansed from Kuwait. So yeah, all of these people need individual rights. And by the way, I just wanna to say to your point about you don't think that local Palestinians want to deport Jews. There's a guy named Corey Gilshuster. People can look mm -hmm. him up. He does the Ask a Palestinian Project, Ask, Ask an Israeli, Ask a Palestinian. Yeah. If you go and look up on YouTube, his many videos, he asks these questions. Palestinians, what would you do if you had control back of Israel? And because of the education from birth, right? The answer is usually for most people, yeah, we want them out. Like it's not their land. Like we want to take the land back. And unless they were here in 1940, 1930, like get out. We don't care where yeah. you go, just go. So I think right. that is the mainstream currently in the okay. Palestinian state. Okay. Okay. So either way, um, I, I, and I don't really even think it's here nor there, to be honest with you in the conflict, simply because, you know, plenty of Israelis obviously would like to have control over all of the, you know, what they believe is like biblical homeland. Um, and, you and know, that's and, and it's, too. that's extreme, right They're And they're all, they're extreme. And almost the answer to this conflict, in my opinion, is that somebody, uh, you know, an out, I, I like, if there is going to be an outside group that comes in and says, look, it's going to be, look, I don't care what either of you want. We just have to do what's what's normal. And you guys just all have to suck it up and live with it. Like that normal thing that we're going to impose upon you because you people are like at each other's throats and causing all kinds of problems. Or we just leave them completely alone, right? Which is like the libertarian perspective would be maybe just to completely hands off on the conflict. 100%. Well, I could tell you my solution if you want. I could jump to that. Or... Okay, we could start there. We could go with your, what's your solution? My solution, which I think any normal person, if they weren't coming into this with nationalistic brainwashing from the beginning, my solution is very simple. Stop moving, stop ethnically cleansing people. No one has to move anymore. Okay. okay. People moved, but now they were born in a certain country. So first of all, those countries should offer them citizenship. So if you're a Palestinian refugee, so-called refugee, but actually it's your grandfather who was the refugee and you're born in Lebanon, then Lebanon should offer you citizenship. Syria right. should offer you citizenship if you were born there. Jordan right. should offer you citizenship. Now, when it comes to the West Bank, Jordan would simply annex the Arab cities like Ramallah, like Tur Tulkrim, uh, just Janine, everything that there's literally no, not a single Jew there. So what good does it do for Israel to annex them? But I think that Jordan should annex them like it had before. And I also think that uh, the 500,000 Jews who live in the West Bank now, you know, that's only a problem for the Palestinian state. It's not a problem for Jordan either. So Israel should annex the Jewish cities. Again, there's not a single Arab there. So it's very simple. No one has to move. Everyone gets citizenship, jobs, and then a real country like Jordan or Israel that have peace agreements with each other already since the 90s um, can then discuss things like border crossings and vetted, you know, just like the Eurozone or how we have in Dubai and Saudi Arabia, people can move freely if they're vetted and they're not terrorists. It's super simple. And the only thing okay. that is in the way is the Palestinian state project. Okay, so what would you, so before I kind of, cause I don't, I definitely don't agree with that. And I wanna get into that, but what would you do before that? What would you do with Gaza? Gaza is, it's a bit more difficult because it should, what should have been done in the 2014, is what the Israeli government wanted to do, but somehow didn't do because of Netanyahu and everything. Mm -hmm. um, Gaza is run by Hamas, and I can get into it, but Hamas and the PLO are not good governments, okay? Sure. They are, they are ter terrorist organizations, according to many, right. okay, according to the UN and, and many, many uh, countries. So in, instead of trying to reform a terrorist organization, and say, okay, now they're finally gonna be good governors. They're gonna take care of the aquifer and the water infrastructure, and they're gonna attract investment like the sheiks of Dubai, okay? Mm -hmm. Instead of that, um, I do think there should have been an international coalition, just like after 9-11, when the US didn't just go in alone. We have the most powerful army, but we took a coalition. We invoked NATO Article 5, the only time it was ever invoked, and we went into Afghanistan as a coalition. Mm -hmm. And Macron from France offered it this time, to Netanyahu, and the only guy who accepted it was President Herzog of Israel. That guy is kind of smart. He accepted Macron's offer. He said, sure, you fought ISIS, let's go in together. 
But everyone else in the Israeli leadership is like, no, we'll do this all alone. And, and so that's why they're pariahs now. And so like they should have made a coalition with the other countries, which by the way, Egypt also doesn't like Hamas. And like they are cooperating with Israel. Every one of Israel's neighbors on, in the South, like Jordan, Israel, is already has a peace agreement with them. So why not use the peaceful framework? Why try to create peace with someone who hates you? So yeah, I would say Gaza needs to be, dis Hamas needs to be disarmed by a coalition that probably should have included France and many of the Arab leaders that participated in Cairo literally a week later, almost begging Israel to give them a plan, like do something like the King of Jordan and everybody. And Israel is like, now nah, we're just going to go it alone, which I think was very, very silly and stupid. Yeah. OK, so the problem with the West Bank, with the with this idea is that right now the Palestinian controlled like Area A. So just so the people watching after the Oslo Accords, uh, West Bank was divided up into three different areas, Area A, Area B and Area C. Area A is totally con that's all Palestinians living in these areas controlled by the PLO. But there is still Israeli presence. There's still IDF presence in these areas, but they're not technically supposed to be controlling those areas. Area B is supposed to be joint controlled areas between with Israel and the PLO. They're supposed to like patrol. These are usually kind of the outskirts of these areas. So you've got the city centers, area A, and then right when you get to like the outskirts, that would be considered area B. And there's supposed to be that joint uh, control there. And then area C is all Israeli controlled. So that's where most, that's where the checkpoints are. That's where, you know, that's where a lot of the settlements are, right? The Israeli settlements. The area, area A is like 11% of the West Bank. It's really small. So when you're talking about, and it's, and you're talking about, you know, areas that are, you'd have to drive through, you have to drive through areas B and C to get to all the various areas of all the area A's. It's not like they're all in one spot and it could be one chunk of land that it, that Jordan annexes in this plan. You're talking about, it would be like cutting up the United States where, where, uh, Jordan comes in and says, all right, we're going to control Portland, Oregon and Salt Lake City and Austin, Texas and New York and, you know, like all over and, and in the in the middle is considered the United States. Right. And the rest is considered some other foreign country. I mean, it's it's like not really feasible to have a country absorb these random spots all around. Well, I'll push back on that because I think okay. this is where we need to get past the statist mentality, okay? That there has to be a jurisdiction that's like contiguous and there's one country, monopoly of force, okay? There's many institutions in the world that can interoperate and they have, I'll give you some examples. Police forces regularly have jurisdictions in cities or whatever, okay? Banks. There's constantly like fraud, you know, departments and, and they figure out like insurance companies figure out who hit what car. You don't need violence for any of this. OK, every day there's thousands of cases. They're figured out on a basis of civil law, on the basis of, you know, so. And so the idea that, oh, we can't Jordan. Remember, these people had Jordanian citizenship until 1988. Right. And so it's not like impossible to imagine that Jordan could give it back to them. And Jordan and Israel could cooperate on water rights, on jobs, on movement. What we need to do is de-radicalize de people, but they're not going to get de-radicalized if they're living under what is essentially reformed terrorist organization. The PLO became the Palestinian Authority. Everyone agrees it's authoritarian. Wikipedia says it's authoritarian. There's no elections, right? And similarly, Hamas. OK, yeah, there are elections on the bottom, but there's never elections for like changing the whole thing. If there were elections, then per people would just choose Hamas. And then you would actually have to deal with the reality that they want Jews out. So I'm saying the only way for what you said is to go in there and say, look, whatever you guys want, this is what's going to happen. We're going to use real states that have real peace frameworks for years, for decades. And they kind of like each other, these states, and they work together. And by the way, the governments of these states are also in precarious positions, like Al-Sisi in Egypt or the King of Jordan, right? Abdullah, who I personally played for in uh, 1996. So, um, so I think that we should let these moderates rule just like Jordan did in, in 1949 in Jericho Conference. All the Palestinian notables said, sure, rule us. That's fine. So what's wrong with that? Why do we but need... What, because what you're, what yeah. you're talking about is 
giving all of the land except for that 11 percent to Israel. So they would essentially annex the entire West Bank, except there would be reservations. There would be native reservations uh, spread out throughout the West Bank that are not administered by Israel, but administered by Jordan. I mean, that's what you're proposing is native native reservations. So what you're saying, and that is very similar when you're saying that this, uh, be because really, if you're not going to carve out a contiguous amount of land for a group of people to live on, then you are talking about Indian reservations. We've done that here in the United States. Yes, that is what that is. There's well, the reason it's there. not, may I say the it, reason that's it's what it not, is. It, yeah, but the reason it wouldn't be there is because they would actually be part of Jordan. They would have citizenship in Jordan. Right. So they're native, they're native reservations for under Jordanian control, which is also kind of insane because at least here in the United States, we don't say our native reservations are controlled by Mexico. We don't say like, well, there's, you know, uh, let, let the Mexicans deal with them because once this land, what used to be Mexico, much, many of the native reservations in the United States are currently inland like i'm in california used to be mexico right there you go. so we don't say we don't say like the native reservations in the united states are administered by mexico they're technically mexican territory the rest is the united states that's insane because for one we control all of the water we have to as a as a, ma a manner of national security we have to control that's the status our mentality airspace there. It doesn't, no but it, does, yeah. it, it doesn't like, of course, we need to control our borders. We have to have safe borders. We, we're going to control our airspace. We're going to control the water supply. We're going to control, control the control. telecommunications. Who is we? Yeah, who but you have we? to, how, who is going to, who's going to develop all of that? Would we allow, as the United States of America, would we allow Mexico to come in and actually administer defense for these native tribes? First would of we all, we allow cooperate. Them to... Sorry, I just want to say we do cooperate all the time with Canada, with Mexico. Uh, we we have drug gangs that you know they try to cooperate on, but I will tell you this: the U.S. straight up stole the the land from Mexico 130 sure. years ago. Well, and then the U.S. paid for it. I mean, and by the way, oh, when not. the U.S. came in, when the U.S. and when there was the the American Mexican War, and America ended up gaining like the large a huge amount of Mexico. I mean, all of this land was Mexico, and I think this was actually two thirds of Mexican land that was taken from Mexico. So they got shrunken down quite a bit. But after that war, we immediately gave all of the Mexicans who were living here citizenship, American citizenship. Their land rights were protected. We didn't deport them down to Mexico and say, you can no longer live here. This is for Americans. No, we did. That we was said, called yes, Operation what? Wetback. We did do that for 2 million people. But put that aside. We did do that. And that was wrong. We now look back at that and say that was wrong. We don't look back at that and say, yeah, we, yeah, we did it. So it's no big deal. But the natives also, when we look at Native American reservations here in the United States, Natives are not stuck in those reservations. They can leave and they can live anywhere in the United States that they want to. They are American citizens. They're also citizens of their tribal lands. They are given these tribal lands that they are theoretically, although we definitely don't always adhere to our <laughs> treaties with the natives, uh, theoretically, they're supposed to be able to control and operate their land, but they still are very reliant on US. They're, we control the airspace, we control they're the water, poor. we control the borders, and they're poor. But those people don't have to live there. They're not stuck there. They can live anywhere they want in the United States. My sister and my brother are native, have native heritage. So, you know, they can live anywhere. They're not they stuck there. They can, on but the rates of depression and suicide are among the highest. And they're, listen, they've, right, lost, of course. Their, right. they've lost a lot of their heritage. They listen, have. And so the United States. So then why would you want to impose that on the Palestinian people? Oh, no. And then also I want put them the in a situation where Jordan would be somehow granted the ability to administer inside of Israel, essentially, these native reservations inside of Israel, when if you're going to stick these people in a reservation, it should absolutely be incumbent upon Israel to administer to these people and give them citizenship and allow them to leave those native areas. It is not. They are not reservations. They are entire cities. OK, so I'm talking well, about what is that? I mean, native land is like that. Right. Well, let, let me and then let me show you some maps, which I've prepared, okay. which I think uh, are important to understand. Um, first of all, the United States is a huge country. It's a very rich country. And even with all that, the reservations are poor, depressed, and there's high rates of suicide. Right. And I'm not talking about sticking people into Banfistans and reservations. OK, I'm not talking about the next apartheid. I am saying the opposite. I'm saying give people a choice. Offer them Jordanian citizenship. It's only in some right, but our natives. But what will that change? Because natives here have American citizenship. 
So they're not, I mean, even if they're poor and there's depression and there's like alcoholism and native reservations, they're still not stuck there. They can leave. They can get out of the native, you know, they're free to go. They're free to go anywhere. Here's a a huge difference. So first of all, I think we both agreed on this, that one of the biggest problems for Palestinians is that they're stateless. Okay. Right. They're stateless people. Right. They're stateless people. And I, and I want to, and this is an important point to make. I just want to make this point real quick. We live in a world where our citizenship is the foundation of our rights. I'm an American, so therefore I am I am granted rights because I'm an American. Our nationality grants us various different rights depending on our nationality. And the Palestinian people are stateless. They are there Israel won't give them Israeli citizenship even though they're living on that land. And yeah. so they're just there without state. They don't have any ability to function, you know, they're, they can't, they're just a stateless people, which means that they don't have any rights, which is why there's one of the reasons why they're so oppressed. So let's start there because that's the whole point. You've said it. And I totally agree in this statist world that we live in, you need to belong to a state to have someone have your back and that yeah. should be it. Okay. So we agree on that, but notice when you right, said, but you're saying, but what you're saying yeah. is you want to give, you want to give citizenship to a group of people living on inside of Israel. Cause if you're going to annex the entire Israel. West bank, it would Nobody's- be Israel. They're surrounded by Israel. So they're enclaves inside of Israel. And instead of being granted Israeli citizenship, allowing them to leave freely those enclaves and live amongst everybody and thrive amongst everybody. You're wanting to give them citizenship for a country that doesn't even border that particular enclave. They're surrounded by Israel. They're not next to Jordan where they can easily flow every day into Jordan. People want to do that with Gaza. Russia's done that with Kaliningrad. Okay, there's there's places where- But Kaliningrad is like a a, a contiguous piece of land that yes, it is surrounded by the rest of Europe. It is still- a piece of land. I mean, that's like, you know, the United States having, I don't know, Guam or something, you know, it's like, yeah. it's kind of an island on its own, but it's, but it's not cities all peppered around. You're talking about a peppering of a hundred little that, that's, that's fine. towns people and live villages. On, so people live on islands all the time. The Philippines were taken over by the U.S. before they were part of the Spanish uh, empire. No, great. Here's me, the let, problem with this. No. Wait, 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 let me just point so that you can counter this. When you're talking, so if you're going to have all, like I said, we live in a world where our citizenship is the foundation of our basic, of our human rights. If you, if you're going to give them Jordanian citizenship, which is going to be the foundation for their rights. In the West Bank But in order, in the West Bank, but but for them to then travel to go visit grandma, so like Bethlehem and they want to go to visit in, in a Nobilis or whatever, they traveling around, they have to go through foreign territory, Israel, to get there. Areas that they don't have any rights because they're not Israeli citizens. That's insane. Okay, so let me, let's go into this in detail because I care about facts on the ground. Okay. First of all, there are many countries that have freedom of transfer. Look at the Schengen zone in Europe. They're doing this right now, right? In the Gulf, they're doing it with UAE and and Saudis. People have freedom. But they're all given, they're, they're like European citizens they don't have they have an extra layer of citizenship inside of the schengen zone okay each of these countries i repeat has a peace agreement and normalized relations with each other why beyond that they share the same currency they're given they're granted citizenship i'm talking about israel and egypt and jordan their governments okay have long made peace anwar sadat made peace with israel first then uh jordan made peace okay the best thing was about the Oslo Accords wasn't that Arafat made a fake peace or he was going to make peace. It's that Jordan really did make peace right around that time. So I'm saying, of course, you should use a peaceful framework. You're talking about, course, oh, they right. should go into these. The only reason there's checkpoints at all, and there's checkpoints, by the way, in Syria and Lebanon, okay, but mostly Syria, because that's a war and torn country. When you have radical groups, that have been trained, and I'm going to get into this, by the USSR, by Iran, okay? Mm -hmm. You need to defend yourself. Cuba was defending itself. Nicaragua was defending itself. When we trained the Contras, we tried to invade Cuba multiple times. We tried to kill their government. These people need to defend themselves against foreign aggression. So what I'm saying is, if you have- Wait, wait, when you said that, are you talking about the Israelis or the Palestinians? Both, Uh, but uh, look, especially when Israelis 
have been uh, attacked, for example, in their in, in their history. And I want to go back to before 1947. They had no state. They were still attacked. They didn't steal anyone's land. I want to ask you a question, Kim. Name one time, one example of of Jews stealing land before they were attacked the, the, in the Civil War in 1947. Meaning, I understand there's a civil war. You get attacked. You fight back. You get some right. land. But I'm saying before that. They were just buying the land peacefully. Well, sure. They were buying the land until they were able to bribe the British into creating a partition plan, which which did steal land and had, along with that, with the partition, a plan to deport uh, and, and ethnically cleanse the regions. I mean, they were no, saying, the well, partition... okay, what are we going to do? Yes, it, it, read the partition plan. It says, what are we going to do I, with I all the Palestinians? Partition the partition so plan yeah. has in it the deep, they were when they dealt with it, they said, what are we going to do with all the Jews living in the Palestinian areas? And what are we going to do with all the Palestinians living in the sure. Jewish areas with partitions? And they said, we'll just move them. I mean, the they had like was a, a partition plan. deportation plan. But the reason there was a partition plan is because the British tried to fulfill their mandate from the from the uh, uh, League of Nations. And yeah. by the way, these mandates for Syria, for Iraq, OK, these were all artificially created. King Faisal sure. agreed with Weizmann about right. the Jews. He agreed with the Zionists. King Faisal was driven out by the French from Syria. Palestinians wanted to join Syria, be southern Syria. That failed. He became king of Iraq. He got installed by the British in Iraq. Right, his brother, right. I think it was his brother, Hussein, uh, Abdullah, he, he became king of Jordan. So all of these right. are- and, and, and by the way, just yeah. to bring, so are you, I, I don't know if, you, if you're one of the types that says this, but are you one that says, Israel is like the great democracy in the middle in the Middle East, and so we should protect this great democracy. Because I hear this a lot. I, like I'm not. I'm not. It's, a, it's like I'll be honest. As long as it's a peaceful country, as a libertarian, like I don't see. Suppose it is a democracy. You know how aggressive democracies have been. The UK, right, the US, yeah, like right. you know what I mean. Just yeah. because you're a democracy does not mean you're suddenly a nice actor. Right. Yeah. No. Totally. Totally. Okay. Well, just so, because I hear this a lot, I hear this like. Um, you know, like Ben Shapiro, for example, be like, well, it's a liberal democracy and that's what we're, and you know, and if you're an American, then you would support liberal democracy. And then he goes on and says, all the Palestinians should be made part of Jordan, a monarchy. I'm like, wait, so instead of granting these people, uh, if we, if you believe that a uh, democracy is the greatest thing and that's what we're protecting and that's why we should support Israel, then why in the world would you say it's okay then to make 2 million or more people go and live under a monarchy well, to be fair, I mean, that, okay, rather so to than be giving fair, them citizenship inside of the liberal democracy it, to be fair internally in the democratic countries people are happy people move there because they have rights so i'm talking about if you're gay okay if you're a free thinker sure. an atheist in fact if you're a woman who doesn't want to have you know uh, honor killings okay then you probably would do better living in a democracy How, right that I'm talking about externally. Right. So it's better for people to be in a democracy. So it's insane by that. Or it's cruel, I should say, to then tell a bunch of people that they need to live under a monarchy that they're that they, you know, that the, that the, the, the is, Palestinians, yeah. when they were when they were living under Jordanian rule, they rightfully rised up against the monarchy. People no. blame the Palestinians. Yes. People blame the Palestinians yeah. for rising up against the Jordanian, the, the monarchy. But that's reasonable. It's reasonable for any people. Europe, everybody in Europe did it. All the countries in Europe rose up against their monarchies. But suddenly, the Arab one, the Arab states want to rise up against their monarchies, and they're blamed for being it radical, organic. violent people. It, wasn't it doesn't matter organic. if it was organic or not. It was it's organic for a human being. It's organic for humans. What we've learned throughout nature, no matter who's funding it. It's organic for people to not live under a monarchy. We've learned that throughout history. Okay, so so Kim, let. I'll give you an example, okay? The Maidan, right? Totally organic, yeah. no problems at all. There was no involvement by the CIA. There was no involvement by no, anyone. No, it was obviously involvement. But right. the- but, but so what, right? So what? It's the will of the Ukrainian people and therefore we should just stay out, right? No, I'm saying that in that situation, that was that's not going from a monarchy which every single European country has toppled because it's human nature to not be under the thumb of one person. That is the, the, the Maidan, what happened there was a change of government from pro-Russian government to pro-West government, right? That's like a, just a change. That's, of course, we don't want that, but it is very natural. Like the Arab Spring, there was a lot of natural, well, even hold if- Hold on, what about the Houthis? 
so we should let the Houthis take over Yemen because again, they just wanted to, to take over the government or the Russian revolution with uh, with Lenin, right? It was like the Houthis. Just I mean, there's plenty come... of examples. There's plenty right. there just because, so for example, the Vietnam War, I mean, we're gonna go back to like my family's sure. history. Uh, there was definitely in kicking the French out of the government, in kicking the French out, there was definitely foreign backing in that movement to kick out the French. But does that make it wrong? It's not just yes. because there was foreign foreign help. It doesn't make it wrong. The just foreign help the French, hurts. Just because the, the French helped the United States become uh, break free from from being a British colony doesn't mean that the actual event itself wasn't rooted in merit. But, yeah. but there are events, sure, there are events where there's outside actors and the people themselves don't really want it. It's just something that happens because of outside influence. But there's also times when the outside influence is helping a just and noble cause. Okay, so everyone always says that we're helping a just and noble cause. If you listen to Russians, they're gonna say that we're just helping the Donbass people not get genocided. If you listen to NATO when we invaded Libya, we were just yeah. helping the Libyans not get genocided by Gaddafi. Right. If we went to NATO bomb Yugoslavia because we were just helping Milosevic not genocide the Albanian Muslim population. It's always invoked in, in Right, Ukraine. but it doesn't mean that it's always wrong. I mean, just because that's always invoked, just because it's always like, oh, no, we're spreading democracy. That's why we need to go meddle everywhere. Doesn't mean that it's always wrong. There are times, and the reason, it's like Chicken Little saying the sky is falling, the sky is falling. It's like, sometimes the sky is actually falling. Okay, and but if 95% of the time in Afghanistan, when we help the Mujahideen throw off the Soviets, right? Who were, yeah. who were okay. It you know how many people died? Two million people. Right, right. And I can tell you but, that Carter and Zelensky don't care. Is there, Hillary doesn't care. Can you? Sure, I, I understand. But can you not see a, a an actual moral justification for wanting to topple a monarchy? I'm trying to tell you one thing. It could be a lot worse. We toppled Saddam. We got worse. We toppled Gaddafi. It got worse. No, I'm talking about the people. So the Palestinian people. So or just the Jordanian people living under a monarchy. Do you think it would be wrong for them to want to rise up and topple a monarchy? And of course, in order to do that, they would need help. They did not so want, they would... not only is it not right, but it's also, they didn't want to do that. Ukraine, if you looked at the polls said no to NATO, for example, the Pew polls, the Gallup right. polls. Okay, Yanukovych was trying to get rid of NATO because that's what Ukraine wanted. Same thing in, in Jordan, you're telling me that in 1949, all the notables got together and unanimously said, yeah, we want you to annex us and then give us citizenship. We want to live well. You're telling me that afterwards, in 1964, the PLO gets started. It's called the Palestine Liberation Organization. Right, okay? right. The USSR and the KGB, literally, this is a cold product of the Cold War. What happens is that the USSR was doing this and the US was doing this with the School of the Americas. Okay, we trained Manuel Noriega to take over Panama. We, you know, take it from Bolivia and, and much more. So we've done th all throughout South America, the, the coups in Chile. Now you could say, yeah, but shouldn't people just depose their democratically elected government, uh, Salvador Allende? You're not gonna say that because de democratically. But my point is the notables who lived in the West Bank democratically said that they want, okay, uh, this guy, um, Abdullah, to rule them. And so what I'm saying to you is the people are the, on the ground are never consulted. The people in Crimea, when they're consulted, they say we want to be independent. Nobody cares. The Kurds are consulted. We want to be independent. Nobody cares. The Catalonians, the Basques. Suddenly, when the Palestinians, you're saying they want, you know how to I know? To not live mean? under a monarchy. I, I don't think anybody wants they to live do, under though. a monarchy. So they do. Millions of Palestinians today live under Jordan today. They, when you go, Jordan is home to two or three million right. Palestinians two, today. Yeah. So the fact is, these people are fine. And by the way, if you ask them, and you ask the Israeli Arabs who are Palestinians living under Israel, do you want to change places with the people who live under this rinky dink PA or Hamas governments, right? I say, are you crazy? No, right. we have a good life. And that's how you know that individual rights and individual people are much better protected by real states. As much as I dislike concentrations of power, you know what I dislike mm -hmm. even more is terrorist organizations that were funded by USSR or USA or Iran and pretending that they can run a state. That's even worse. That's like having a rebellious teenager run a household 
rather than an adult that's been like peaceful. No, I mean, I agree. I agree. But I also don't think the Palestinians should be going to I think they should be under is I think Israel needs to give them full citizenship and it needs to be a one state solution with every single person living within those borders being given equal rights together. And if they vote and they and they're that would be 50 50 Jews, 50 50 Arabs at this point when you do the math uh, and it, and then just let the cards fall where the cards fall. I mean, that's that's democracy. That's what they should be doing. Why are you opposed to rather than like if these why, why are you opposed to these areas inside the West Bank, this 11 percent of the land where the Palestinians are living right now? Why are you opposed to Israel? giving them citizenship and making them part of Israel. Because let me show you the map. Can I, can we bring okay. up the maps? Yep. Okay. Sure. Oops. All right. Here. All right. There's the map. This is the history of the mandate of Palestine. The mandate of Palestine included Jordan. Okay. Jordan was added to this mandate in 2021. And for a brief moment, Jews asked, can we live there too? And Samuel Herbert was told no. Samuel mm -hmm. Herbert was a Jewish guy from Britain. He was administering this whole mandate. The British mm -hmm. said, no, no Jews can live. Zero Jews can live in this larger piece of land. Okay, so we don't talk about that, but let's continue. Then the Jews were told, okay, you can't live even in the Palestinian territories. You gotta be cleansed from there. Right. And so what you're talking about, Kim, was already tried. That was the that was the mandate. British failed after decades of trying to fulfill a mandate of the entire League of Nations. They failed because the Arabs, local Arabs, did not want to have a state together with the Jews. So this idea that suddenly today they'll want it, when you literally could go on the street and ask them, they'll say, no, we don't want it. 80%, I'm not saying everybody, but 80%. Yeah. Is And look, on that map, you saw, if Jews can't live in most of the Palestinian uh, mandate, including all of Jordan, and Arabs can get that, and they do have that, and millions of Palestinians live there today. Just because you happen to be on the other side of the river in 1988 and you lost your passport, why would Israel annex you? There's not a single Jew in your city. Go go rejoin where you do have brothers and sisters, literally, who are living there. You, you can't go there either now. So that whole Allen B. Bridge and everything, you should be able to go there for work. And of course, you should be able to go to Israel too. But that can only happen once people get de-radicalized. And the only way they could get de-radicalized is if they don't live under Hamas or PA. That's my point. This part, so this map, let me just bring this back up. So you're, this map right here, so this is 1921 on, but we know the Balfour Decla Declaration was from 1917, already declaring that there would be this Jewish nation that would be carved out. And so, of course, there was a lot of, you know, when that news came around, you know, you've got uh finally the they they had the ottoman rule for a long time they were fine under the ottoman rule and then suddenly the ottomans get defeated and the new guy comes in the brits come in and the brits are like all oh, right we know some things so what we're going to do is we're eventually going to carve up this land and give it to these that's jewish not, immigrants that's not entirely true either let's go over the ottoman period during okay. the ottoman period it was terrible to be a christian yeah it was pretty uh, relatively good to be a jew compared mm -hmm. to being slaughtered in killing fields by the Ottomans and the Kurds, okay, helping them. Why the then, Syrians, if that's true, why yeah. then have we seen a, a massive dwindling of the Christian population in the Palestinian territory, including Israel? Why have we, why have we seen a massive, during the Israeli, uh, the Israeli time period, not the Ottoman time period? I mean, the, so, the, uh, the, the dwindling of the Christian yeah. population has been massive. The Christian population lives today under Israel, under Jordan, under the British, better than they have ever lived under the Ottomans in 1970. But if that's I just true, wanna, then they would have fled, right? I mean, they would have. Well, can I, they did flee. Can I just tell you, like, just off the top of my head, the Hamidian massacres under Sultan Hamid, okay? Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of Christians killed in killing fields. Right, and right. Okay. There's no doubt that Christians Wait, have been then, actually the Then most you got the, 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 the Armenian genocide. Then you right. got the Assyrians in Sipho. You right. got the Greeks in um, Chios, okay, the island of Chios. Hundreds of thousands of Christians of all kinds, Armenians, Assyrians, Greeks, okay, killed, slaughtered, massacred, okay? Right. So compared totally to understand. That, compared right. to but, that, the British were much better, of course. Sure. And the French and the British established protectorates in Egypt, in Syria. Every, all of these are artificial, all of these. And, and you got to understand, it, 
it, the homeland for the Jews wasn't going to be a Jewish supremacy ethno state. It was going to be the kind of thing that Stalin wanted to do in uh, Crimea for the Jews. It was going to be a multinational state that was a home for a large group of Jews. Right. And um, and it would allow them to immigrate. Well, there. I mean, it, it, to me, it makes perfect sense that under Ottoman rule, Muslim Ottoman rule, Christians would be persecuted. It makes perfect sense to me that under British Christian rule, Christian was Christians would not be persecuted. But then when there was Israeli Jewish rule, suddenly Christians are fleeing again. I mean, uh, of course, the British who are Christians protected Christians. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty obvious. But the, but then the Muslims, the Muslim population there uh, had been told to shove aside and we're going to give this smaller population of Jews 60 some odd percent of the land. You're going to live on less than even though you're a larger population we're giving. And really the idea, the part, the Brits kind of screwed everything up. I mean, I when I look ar around the world map, almost every conflict result is when you trace it back, it's because of the Brits. It's then, you know, with India and Pakistan, Hong Kong and China, uh, what's going on in Palestine, Israel, I mean, practically everywhere in the world that there's a conflict. It's because the Brits decided to arbitrarily draw some lines. Sure. And that happens. And empires that typically uh, leave a vacuum after they leave, there's a civil war. So you mentioned yeah. in 47, Pakistan and India. That's a great example. When the British left, you had a, um, a vacuum of power. And the atrocities and the, the population transfer, a million people died, far larger right. than the Nakba, which was 15,000. A million people died. But they but moved Pakistan's on. Pakistan's its own nation. I mean, it's its own nation. It's a nuclear power. I mean, we're not talking about a nation that was still li living under the subjugation of another and not allowed yeah. to flourish. They were. They were under the British Raj. They were under the British Raj for hundreds of years, the entire Indian. Right. Subcontinent. I'm saying once once the Brits decided to kind of offload, right, because they, they, they went through this period of time where they're like, all right, we're offloading. And they started drawing out, you know, they started carving stuff out. I mean, even the, the, the issue with like the Kurds and the Turks and the Kurds and, you know, like in, in that whole region is because when the British decided to carve up the Middle East, they forgot the Kurds and they didn't give the Kurds anything. And they were like, hey, what about us? Uh, and so that's kind of created now some of the squabbles that the Kurds are having, you know, that that some of these countries like Turkey and whatever are having with the Kurds. So, I mean, really a lot of that is- I, would, I wouldn't hey, want the PKK to run its own state. Erdogan would probably agree with me, right? What I'm saying is- Sure, I Erdogan don't agrees with that, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's any, it, look, if the Kurds can do it, more power to them. I don't have any problem with them rising up and carving out their own piece of country if they can get it done. I don't want to have to be involved with it. Every time there is a revolution, whether it's the Maidan, you got the anti-Maidan, you got the French Revolution, you got the counter-revolution, right? You got right. every time it's bloody and every time the Jacobins or someone ends up killing a lot of people. Russia, 30 million dead or 20 million dead in the counter-revolution, okay? I'm talking about when Lenin right, came to right. There's really no point in creating upheaval when as a libertarian, I'm telling you, it's the oldest game in the book. One empire comes to the guys on the outskirts of the other empire, say Ukraine, or in this case, uh, Palestine, and say, well, Kurds, we did this with the Kurds, with, with uh, Saddam yeah. Hussein. We say, help us get on our side. You hate those guys, right? We'll give you your own state. We'll give you your own whole thing, right? The British did that with King Faisal, with the Arabs. Help us defeat the Ottomans. And then, guess what? It's always a noble cause. Yeah, your cause is noble. Brzezinski says this to the Afghans. Go fight for your mosques. You'll have your homes back again. Kick the Soviets out, right? Two million people dead later, two million human beings with futures. And suddenly, yeah, well, you know, our geopolitical thing, I guess it didn't work, you know? And that's what I'm saying. You can't, as a libertarian, look at this and be like, you guys are fighting over flags, over territories. How about you give people rights first? How about you make sure, you could always do this diplomatically. You can always figure out as an administrative, did you know Crimea was given by Russia to Ukraine with not a single shot fired it was just an administrative decision. Just change a bunch of road names. Now, right. today, they're fighting over this. So the same thing here. The USSR trained Palestine Liberation Organization to liberate Palestine because Israel and Jordan were in the Western sphere of influence. It was happened to be that um, they used to be, Stalin helped Israel to, be, to, to get its independence, just like what you said. But then when they entered the Western sphere of influence, they're like, hey, let's sabotage the whole thing. Let's help 
Syria and Egypt instead. And so to this day, Palestinians have been kicked out of Kuwait because PLO took the side of Saddam. They were kicked out of Jordan, okay? Because you say they wanted to rise up. They didn't want to rise up. It was the PFLP and the PLO, which were stooges of the, they were essentially just militant organizations sponsored by the USSR. Okay, even if that's true, even if it was just small terrorist groups kind of ruining it for the masses, uh, it does, again, you know, that doesn't justify years, decades long occupation, decades long taking of land. Right. It doesn't justify this. We don't, after winning a war, start taking land. We don't, after winning wars, just subjugate the people and occupy them and keep them as second class citizens for decades no, upon that. decades upon decades. We do that. We did that in Haiti. We did that in a lot of places. Hawaii. We took over we, Hawaii. When we do that, and when no. we we've now we're an enlightened people now, we're supposed to be oh. anyway. We're a new generation. We look back at our ancestors and we say that was wrong. Just because we did slay enslave people doesn't mean now it's okay for some other group to enslave. And because you know well, how we, we can solve this tomorrow by giving them citizenship in a real state. So let in me Israel. ask you. Okay, they're so in the Israel. People, no, so no, not in Israel. Happen. Again, again, I just want to be clear. They have citizenship. Why can't in they have it in Israel? Why is it? They do. So oh, hold on one second. So I want to back up just for one second. So you said you're against these outside empires coming in, helping a group of people like the help me, help me group. Right. And then saying, and we're going to give you a state like, oh, yeah, we're going to come in and we're going to help you. And we're going to give you a state. Kurds. How we'll do you, you feel? Yeah. OK. How do you feel about World War II, the Holocaust and then the creation of Israel right after that? I mean, that's exactly what you're talking about. The Holocaust was modeled on the Armenian genocide carried out by the Ottomans. So and should Hitler the United States not have it. gone involved? Should the United States have just said, look, you know what? That's your thing. We're not going to rush in to help you. And we're certainly not going to carve out a state for you because help me, help me. We're the victims. We're not. Stal what you're talking about, resettling the Jews in some state. Stalin tried to do that. Crimean Tatars, just like Palestinians, were like, we're not having this in our backyard. And they started doing terrorist uh, organizations there. No, I'm asking but, you, should the United yeah. States have gotten involved? You've got one empire, the German Empire, doing what the German Empire is doing. Should another empire gone in and meddled with all of these Jews and their lives? Yes, and I, I, said, do think that, know, I do think that to prevent a genocide, we should get involved. Countries right now, everywhere. Did you know in Sudan right now there is a genocide? The people don't even care. We should know that there is a proxy war happening all the time. And these proxy right. wars need to stop in Yemen. Well, we're not funding the genocide in Sudan. The reason why people care, the reason why I care, for example, uh, you know, about the Palestinian situation versus all these other areas of the world that where there's terrible things going like on. Yemen is because my money is funding it. I have to pay for this and I don't want to pay for this. Okay, but our money was funding the attack on Yemen and the Saudi coalition. Yeah, and I and and I did entire uh segments, you know, many of us spoke out against the the war on the Saudi yeah, but with our American how, dollars how, and our American money. But notice how small the the protest against the Saudi coalition bombing Yemen was compared to then after October 7th but, like there, there's before a reason Israel for that. fired a single shot before Israel yeah, did Yemen, anything. Saudi Arabia is not trying to ethnically cleanse Yemen. You know, Arabs aren't trying to ethnically cleanse another Arab country of Arabs. They're not trying to, it's a war. It's a terrible war, but there isn't a, a desire for Saudi Arabia to annex you, Yemen. There isn't a desire for Saudi Arabia to, to uh, ethnically cleanse the Arabs from, you, you know, say, Arabs. You, can, you know, the United States people, apologists, they do this. They say, well, we didn't annex the country. We only invaded it, bombed it like Laos, you know, we didn't tell our own people, but we didn't annex it. So we're better than Russia. It's like, no, I'm just saying that there is yeah. a difference in wars, just like you pointed out. You believe the United States should have gotten involved in World War II. So there are some wars where you feel like we should speak up more. We should be more involved genocide. when Only. it comes to genocide. And many of us believe that what is happening to the Palestinians is an ethnic cleansing campaign and a genocide when you look at Gaza. And so I'm saying Israel feel, should have, Israel, absolutely, Macron should have insisted that they have a coalition and they work together with Israel to come to Hamas, right, as a group with Arab yeah. leaders and say, look, Hamas, it's over. Like, you got to disarm. We're all against you. OK, that's what should have happened. So I completely agree that Israel should not have gone in alone. I think it was stupid of the Netanyahu government. But I'm saying right now, right now, we both agree that the Palestinians are stateless. Just like the Rohingya right, people. Right, they're stateless, sure. And I don't think that they should be, I, I, I no longer believe in a two-state solution. 
largely also like for many of the points that you've brought up. Well, for one, you can't let Hamas be in charge. I mean, that's obvious. Uh, two, the PLO is corrupt and in effect, you know, they're 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 just a boss is way too old. I mean, you know, it's just there's nothing. These organizations are just puppet organizations that are not good for the people at all. Okay. So there is they've they've cut down and dwindled uh, any sort of good leadership that could have possibly risen up amongst the Palestinians. So I agree that there cannot be really realistically it's it's not going to happen. But the people are living on the land with the Jews and they need to without any I get it. You're not going to like it. The Palestinians aren't going to like it, but you're going to have to live together in the Holy Land. You're going to rename it. You're going to no, rename do. it. It's no longer going to be a Jewish nation. It's no longer going to be Israel, home for the Jews. It's going to be Canaan, the Holy Land. You could call it whatever the hell you want to okay, call it. Okay, I get it. it. Your solution you is- you all have to live together and you right. all need to be given equal rights. And if you rename the place and if you redo the flag and if it's a if it's a, a land for the home for the old ancient Canaanites, fine. You're literally saying what the British were trying to do for decades. They had a mandate to do. They tried their best. No, to do. they they separated it up and they said Jews over here, Arabs over there. No. That's that's in, that's crazy. Right. Okay, can I just bring up the the other images just real quick? Yes, sure. Yeah. Okay, so this image here. Yeah. This is before there was ever a civil war, before the Zionists stole a, piece, a single piece of land. And Kim, I just want to ask. This was after you, the Balfour declaration. After, after the, the Balfour, Balfour declaration. Yeah. But before so the, the Jews Arabs had, knew what was up, they already knew what was up, that there was well, a Well, it was plan. a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're xenophobic, and look, they say it in this country, the Jews will not replace us. Uh, we will not have all these immigrants coming in. I can understand the anti-immigrant sentiment. Don't get me wrong. Sure. It happens all over the world. But don't deny, uh, look at all those massacres. I'm talking about- No, I, I, look, like I, I'm not denying at all that Jews have been persecuted, that Jews have been- genocided that jews have been living under uh terrible by all peoples in the world against in palestine. Jews. i'm saying in palestine and, sure and in palestine i understand that that happened here in the united states it happened all out all throughout europe yet yet you forgive europe completely of this like germany is somehow completely forgiven for the atrocities that germany committed but the arabs have to continue to be pointed at prodded at and no. harped on over no. their times that they were anti-Semitic, just like much of Europe was. I mean, no, that's, but the whole point. I, I, but that's the whole point. If Arabs uh, stopped having these organizations that let me show you the rest of the images so we could just really yeah. quickly the re okay. these images. So this is Al Husseini. This is the first generation of Arab leaders who basically built uh, SS bat uh, battalions in Bosnian mm -hmm. Waffen SS. OK, in Bosnia, he met with Hitler. Uh, this uh, over here is the Hamas leadership. Okay. There's all of them are on video saying we want to kill the Jews. Some of them want to kill them everywhere, but some of them just want to kill them in, in, in Palestine. My point sure. is if this didn't exist and Arabs were simply, um, uh, citizens of Jordan, citizens of Egypt, citizens of Syria, citizens of Lebanon, then Same guess citizens what? Citizens of Israel. Citizens, they are citizens of Israel, just to be clear. Then all, saying, why, so well, then why not make all of them citizens of Israel? The because, Arabs are living, Israelis are always so quick to point out the fact that Arabs are living peacefully, you know, that there's 2 million Arab citizens of Israel. Right. They are. Right. Okay. So then they can, you can live peacefully together. So then they do. all of you live peacefully together. No, but that, then okay, so that's my last image. Rest. I want to show you these two last images. Okay. One is, look what happened when the Jewish refugees had to be kicked out of all these Arab countries is literally like five of them left in some of these countries, right? Where do they all go? Well, some of them went to the US and, and France, but many of them went to Israel. And there was a period where the calories that they got, the austerity period, you can look this up on Wikipedia, was worse mm -hmm. than Gaza ever has been. So they got two times less calories than Gazans ever have gotten. And guess what? It's hard what to- what does that get, matter? Well, because it's hard to assimilate millions of people. It was hard enough and there were Jews, okay? So yeah. All of these Mizrahi Jews that went into Israel, it was hard to absorb them. And now you're saying, you're literally saying, because statists uh, think in this way, and I don't mean you, Kim, I mean every yeah. statist, is a person born in Lebanon should not have any rights in Lebanon. They should not be offered citizenship in Lebanon. They no, I think that's wrong. They should be told to go back to their country yeah, right. one day, right? And my point is, I mean, that is not choice. You know how I know if they were making a choice, if they were given a choice, yeah. And I can tell you there's polls, PCPSR polls of Palestinians in Gaza, 30% wanted to emigrate. Same thing in West Bank. They don't have a choice to emigrate, but I can tell you where they 
luckily, people who went to Britain, people who went to the US, your family went to the US. Guess what? Getting citizenship, birthright citizenship, because you were born in the country, is a great solution to a lot of these things. And I right. just want so why that for aren't everybody. the Gazans then given that um, by the Israelis? If the Israelis are going to be hell bent on controlling all these areas, then the Israelis, it's incumbent upon the Israelis to give equal rights to all of these people that are under their control. I don't think Israel should the control these areas. I keep saying, I think Jordan should control some of them. I think Egypt no, should but that, control- No, but you're saying you want to turn them into reservations and then Israel gets all the rest of the land surrounding it? They're not reservations. They are part of Jordanian territory with full access and full citizenship. They can serve in the Jordanian they parliament. Have to go they, through, they would have to go through Israel territory in order to get from city to city. How do you think in Monaco? Order- I was in Monaco. How do you think they go through France? Uh, Luxembourg. But Monaco is one contiguous little area. I mean, it's small, but it is one spot. It's not. Yeah, but Monaco isn't like Monaco's here and then there's a Monaco over here and a Monaco over here and you have to get through France to get there. The Philippines are like that. Bahamas are like that. Little islands. Here's my well, point. little islands, but they're not going through. They're going through their own water territory Why? in order to Who get to more of their territory. Through? Why can't people? You said people should live together. Literally, you want to uh, uh, abolish all borders and have one state where people go through yeah. each other's neighborhoods all the time. I think so- they should, like like we do here in the United States, like what we do with our Native Americans. We they are they are Americans. They are they are given. Well, okay, so so Kim, I have this main question for you. In Lebanon, there are millions of people in Lebanon and Syria. Okay, that Israel does not control. Lebanon controls right. it. Okay, right. Yarmouk is a uh, refugee camp that was bombed by Assad. Okay. Assad sure. controls it. Right. I don't blame Assad, by the way, for fighting ISIS. I don't tell him that Assad was committing a genocide of, of ISIS, okay, of, of civilians, because I understand Syria had to do something. Now, I, I, I t- totally agree that Russians and Syrians are heavy handed. And as a, as a libertarian, I'm appalled by the death toll. But yeah. genocide, if there are no militants and there's no existential threat to your country, then you could call it a genocide. If, if you're saying that you're going to warn people and you're going to rebuild in the day after and you're going to give them lives and you're not trying to eliminate them, there's got to be another word. But I just have a question for you, Kim. In, in Lebanon and Syria, is, is, Egypt, is Israel supposed to absorb all of those stateless people and they have no. to move? No, I'm not even talking about that. I mean, those, those people... Clear, you know, this war, the conflict is complicated. It's it's not really complicated. There are some factors that make it slightly complicated because of the way the war is fought. So you've got the 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 surrounding Arab nations, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon. So they're, right. Yeah. They're they are helping, you know, the the Palestinians, one of the ways they fight this war, which has been a very long war, is they resist through existing, just by existing and by continuing to claim that land as theirs. That's part of the war because they're because of the way just the narrative is is big. It's for imposed them. on them by Arab League Resolution 1547. People can It's not it imposed. Up. I mean, that's where these people live. I mean, the, the Palestinians are living on that land now. They were living on that land, the ones that left. It's not imposed at all. I mean, that was where they, they were a living. Few kilometers. But I'll tell you this, if you ask Palestinian uh, Arabs in Israel, Israeli Arabs, who are citizens of Israel. Do you want to go live in uh, where your grandma lives in Palestinian territories, right? They're going to say no. If you ask Jordanian Palestinians, do you want to live in the West Bank? They'll say no. And the and Egyptians and everything. The reason is right because, because when your know. citizenship is t- your rights are tied to your citizenship. Exactly my point. So with these others, when you're talking about the refugees now. So now you're talking about you, I'm I'm mostly concerned the first step is the Arab, the Palestinian population living inside of the map of what we call Israel Palestine, right? Everybody there needs to be given the same citizenship with the same rights. Outside of that, when you've got these Palestinian refugees, which by the way, there should be then a right to return, just like Israel has a right to return for Jews all around the world. I don't they think have there the should right be a right of return in, for Jews. And there either. should be no right of return for anybody, right? So they'd have to cancel that solid immigration hype program well, that Israel right has for all the Jews. It's about countries deciding their immigration policy. Right. So and Israel when, happens- when, sure. And when Israel uh, uh, has to give, is forced to, to give equal human rights to all the Arabs living in the actual land right now, and we're not talking the refugees in Lebanon or Syria, when the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza are given full citizenship, 
there will be equal 50 50 jews and arabs okay, and I, I, they will have to change you, their immigration law they won't uh, the arab population which is 50 percent, will not allow for unrestricted immigration for jews and extremely restricted if not completely denied immigration for arabs that won't happen anymore when it's 50 50 democracy i agree i understand your position that we should have a new state that's yeah. 50 50. i am simply for, well, saying equal rights for everybody every time it's been tried even with the British putting their full Never might been tried. It, <clears throat> the British mandate was literally to create a homeland. No, it was prejudice. Jews over here, Arabs over here. No. That wasn't going to work. No, the partition was was proposed by the Peel Commission in 1939 because it was sent out there to determine why is it that they can't make this by national state? And they couldn't make this state because the Arabs did not want to do it with the Jews. Okay, That's why and they you said- know Back in 1948, we also had segregation in the United States. Things change. We're in a new era now. We're in a new generation. So they need to try things now, today, with a new generation and a new mindset. Well, they asked the people and, on the street, and the people on the street say, we don't want to live with the Jews. Once right, we and get so they, and the Jews, when you ask them, they say they don't want to live with the Arabs. So I why get impose? It, but they're all going to have to live together because it's dream? the right, it, because yeah. It's not. No, it's it's just look, you live together on the land. You guys are going to have to work it out together. The You're all allowed the, access. You're all allowed to go anywhere you want. Up, the globalists are propping up the PA with unelected, like you said. It um, doesn't matter. So, like I said, you could wipe out the entire governments of the Palestinian people. You still have millions of people stateless living on the land that you call Israel, that you want Israel essentially to annex and leave them on these little reservations that you say you don't even think Israel should have to control or like administer as they should. I don't think there they should, should be, administer them. I don't think that there should be two laws, like a military law for the Palestinians and civilian law for the Jews. I think it's very simple. I'm saying- No, I know, no but you're saying you move. think that they should just be absorbed by Jordan, but I'm saying that that's, <laughs> but they would be inside of the contiguous land of Israel. And the, no. the only reason why Jews don't want to give them the equal rights is because they know it would no longer be a Jewish state. And that's so me, fundamentally what- Let me just, uh, ask you this, uh, this question, because I, I think on this we can agree. In Lebanon, should they be offered citizenship in Lebanon if they were born there and their parents were born Yes, there? of course. Right. That needs to be worked on after. That's what I'm saying. Why? Like why that, wait? That, why wait? It, or you could do that now. Fine. But the, the problem is, is that they don't want to because they're still fighting a war. And the who, war is who Palestinians exist. Who doesn't want to? Well, I, it's I, whoever I don't know the people, the Individuals people of Palestine, the Lebanese, make their own the Lebanese. Choices. Individuals should decide whether to become a citizen of Lebanon or sure. not. Sure. And guess what? In the then UK, why can't those individuals, Greg? Then why can't those same individuals decide on whether or not they want to have Israeli citizenship? Fine. And I will tell you that most of Ramallah is given the choice between joining an Arab country or joining a Jewish country would join an Arab country because they did and they and and, and they Not lost anymore. the citizenship. I can tell you the yeah. sentiment has shifted and the people inside of Palestine understand and they 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 totally understand that if they're just if it's a one state solution now and the sentiment has shifted. When I was there four years ago, it was still very much the majority wanted a two state solution. They wanted a Palestinian state. But now when the, the Palestinians I've spoken to, prominent leaders of Palestine, people that are slated to potentially be the future leaders, they're now saying it's a one state, one state only. And the only, the only path forward is for everybody to be given equal rights in the land. Now the Jews don't wanna do that because that changes the Again, nature it's not about the of the Jews. Jewish state. It is, is about the, the Jews. It's about the Jews because me. the Jews yeah. don't want to give up their idea of an ethno-nationalist state, of a Jewish See, homeland. Kim, this, is, this is exactly, what I have the problem with anti-Zionists with, okay? Armenia is an ethno-nationalist state that is a safe haven for Armenians. They were genocided just in Nagorno-Karabakh just a few months ago. They get to leave to Armenia. Armenia right. is 98% Armenian, okay? It's an ethno-state. I have no problem with that. It, let Vietnam me is an ethno-state, right? I mean, because it's Vietnamese people living there. I mean, but these are natural. They weren't created artificially. Armenia was created artificially with an yeah. ethnic cleansing campaign. It, if it, like, I have zero problems with Jews creating a Jewish homeland, if they, if it can really truly be done naturally in an organic way in an area, like for example, if, if Jewish people would have just immigrated into Palestine and 
And because they were, they were welcomed and there was no restrictions on the immigration, and then they just happened to end up There's the majority. There's restrictions on immigration. The Ottomans. Yeah, of course, restrictions. right. So that's right, and there should be. So you know, if but if they were to like what we've known throughout history is groups migrate. So we don't really allow that anymore because now the whole world has been carved up into borders. So it's like harder. That's my point but, as a libertarian. But let me just say why I have a problem with anti-Zionists and why they hurt Palestinians. Okay. Okay. Because listen to what you're saying. The Jews have to solve it. They have to give everyone citizenship. Yeah, what about because they're the ones the in control. They control the airspace. Citizenship. They control the security. They control the water. They control Not in everything. Lebanon. Not in Syria. No, but, I'm okay. But the, you're talk, I'm talking about, I, I don't, when you when you uh, when you shift it to all of these other territories where there's refugees, yes, should should those people that are born just like the Palestinians born here in the United States are Americans. Palestinians born in Lebanon should be Lebanese. Palestinians born in Syria should be Syrian. Sure, and well, the Palestinians born inside of Israel in the what the area that you want to be all of Israel should be Israeli. That is Again, the point. You're no one except. You and BDS and a few people think that Israel, that this is Israel. They're called occupied Palestinian territories. Now, if you want to call them Israel and Israel should. No, I, I, because I don't think it will more, be called Israel. I think once you, it becomes. You actually would agree with the extreme Zionists who want the greater Israel. You want to build a greater Israel, call it something else, and then have a, uh, a democratic country. What I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying to you is, is that no one should move. The people in Lebanon should be offered citizenship by Lebanon because they were born there. And you agree with me on that? I think Syria that if Israel, yes, I think it, it, and what I think is if Israel is going to control the border between Israel and Jordan, everybody on this side, on the Western side of that border is Israeli and should be given Israeli citizenship. I don't agree with they're this. They're not going to like, control any border. Hodge, like I'm suddenly now, because I live in this particular enclave, am now going to be given Mexican citizenship. Uh, even though I'm living in the United States of America, like I'm not that that to me is not a realistic that is because you're holding on to this whole idea of having a Jewish nation. You just no, want a Jewish I am nation a libertarian so bad. telling you that this this what you perfectly illustrated is the status mentality. There must be a border. People on this side are this people on that side. Are yes, that. because that's and how rights are imagine, defined in this world. But you can't no, imagine it's not that I can't imagine the it. network states. I, network I imagine states. it. I imagine it. I, it's never been done. It's never been done. That Apologies has not been working done. on it. I'm working on it. This I mean, but exactly it's never been done. It is what, of course, Israel would like, because then eventually, I, I mean, it's, it's also just not What's like wrong feasible. With, what, why do we need the monopoly on force in every single inch of the earth? Why can't we have some places where people cooperate? You know, for example, the because grain you have deal. To, because there's, because when Russia you're dealing with the grain with, deal in the Black like, Sea, they cooperate. It's like having a neighborhood. Greg, it'd be like living in a neighborhood and, uh, you know, 10% of the houses do not, they're, they're like part of a different neighborhood. So they're going to have different water source, different electric source, different. Do, like, that's all the free market. You have different utilities. Of no, course. but we're talking about like they're administered by, they, they're not even allowed access. It's not a free market. What? They yes, I agree with you. I think there should be a free market, a meaning utility, the people in a, the people living in Bethlehem should be allowed to be to choose if they want Israeli citizenship, yeah. or I suppose if you want to do this weird thing and offer them Jordanian citizenship. You're talking it about menu. it should be on the menu. Let me just say this as a last thing because I okay, Crimeans were not given a choice between being independent, being part of Russia, or being part of Ukraine. Every time right. they chose to be independent. What I'm trying yeah. to tell you is we tried independence for the people of the West Bank. They're ruled by terrorists or they're ruled by authoritarians. And, and, and those authoritarians are nice guys. They're sweethearts. Abbas is a sweetheart. Eric was a sweetheart. But I'm telling you, they don't have any money. It's not a real state. OK. And yeah, so why is that? Why is that? Because Israel controls the borders. Israel controls the trade. Israel won't allow for the, they've, so they've let Jordan the control West the borders. Bank. So let Jordan, what I'm trying to say is stop, stop blaming and waiting for Whitey Superman, or in this case, or Israel or someone to save everybody. I am saying they can save themselves. There are real states there that gave them citizenship. It's not like it's unheard of. They literally had those. And the only reason they lost them is because terrorist organizations like the PLO funded by the KGB ruined it no, for them. That, that's not why the West Bank no longer has Jordanian, Jordanian citizenship September. because- 
Now, Israel came in during after the it's the 19th, the six day war and Israel annexed it. But then they didn't annex the actual people. They took the land and they occupied the land. They, had they didn't passports. technically annex it. But they what they passports. did was they occupied the land. They essentially annexed all of the West Bank, but then didn't annex the people along with the it. People which is what had supposed Jordanian to passports until 1988. That means right. And years. then what? Yes, because is, Jordan got sick of administering to a group of people that were under Israeli occupation. They were, got sick of the PLO saying, we want to be the sole representatives of the Palestinian people, the sole representatives. Of course, as they should have been, because they were they wanted no, to have a democracy. They didn't want to, Why would they I, represent? They should be the represented people, by real states, by actual states that have peace agreements and a framework for peace. That's all I'm saying. And I think the, the longer we keep perpetuating the statelessness like Ernerwa does with their victimhood industry. By the way, Kim, I just want right, to ask no, you. No, I get it. What's your what's your uh, feeling about the victimhood industry of billions of dollars, ever growing bureaucratic? No, I mean I get it on both sides. It, there's a ton of victim. Jews are the best at victimization. I don't want to hear it about anything else. Sure, I tell this like, to that Jews is too. True. I tell this to Jews too. Yeah, Jews it's like the victimization. The victimization complex is huge, and you're right. There is a huge industry, and that's one of the problems we have with our border. Right, the border crisis here in the United States. It's because there's a whole industry of these uh you know these organizations these charitable organizations that are helping and and then they end up growing bigger and bigger and massive and massive because there's that's so much money behind that it. is literally the no, Arab no, league totally and yeah. what conspired to keep palestinians stateless it is a matter of arab, arab league policy since 1949 we got to get rid of that policy it's not helping any individuals these individuals have no i get it they're, they're that for sure and that is pro that's one of the reasons why in this complicated conflict uh that the why the lebanese won't give them citizenship why the syrians won't why right it's part of that victimization industry of it like we'll keep you policy the victim. not to give them citizenship ever. right exactly it to could keep be them victims of them. right yeah and, 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 and that's so can, wrong and that's the last wrong. thing i want to say and i want your uh reaction to this is that is that we tried a one-state solution the british put their whole might behind it just let me finish this this point the Zionists did not steal a single piece of land uh, until 1947. They did not take anything by force. They paid top dollar and the Quakers hate, helped them. Many Christians helped them. They bought swamp land. They cleared it of malaria in the world first. They cleared Palestine. People couldn't live in Palestine because malaria. Malaria kills more people. In those parts, in the partition in those parts, part. In those yeah. parts, it kills you know more people, millions of people every year than you know COVID, everything. So. I, okay, my point is this: they got rid of malaria. They had a, uh, they brought electricity. Okay, and still the Arabs were like, "We don't want your electricity." I guess we like that. Now well, we can move there because malaria. We, we. That's how everyone moved there. So the yeah. idea it was it was sparsely populated. You look at nineteenth century reports. Germans, every nobody could move there. Even the British army could not survive for more than right. In certain, but we want to be clear: in certain areas of Palestine, there was it was rampant with malaria that had caused, and that wasn't like had been there forever and ever and ever. There was actually, you know, these areas were populated at one point in the past. Malaria had run rampant, and it actually caused many of the people inside the Arab population that was there to even move out of those areas. So yes, the area that there was a lot of land that it was that's why it was easy for a lot of the jewish immigrants to buy that land and it was for a good price because it was like unlivable land so what's wrong uh, with that's, that that's good no, there's nothing wrong with that well there i don't think there's anything wrong with that i don't think there's anything you know i understand that was there a hostile just like there is here in the united states a hostile uh attitude towards these foreigners these foreign immigrants coming in sure right that happens everywhere in the world sure that's a natural reaction um, you know, could the could the reaction have been better? P probably just like we look at our reaction towards the Irish, the, our reaction towards the Chinese, like coming here, our reaction towards all these various groups that have come here to the United States to help build it. And that is why I just want to say that's why instead of arguing to smush them all together again and have foreigners live next to each well, other. Why not? We do it here in the United States. We have countries like Sudan and uh, Congo, uh, uh, like Darfur uh, region and all of these uh, genocides in Rwanda, Tutsis and, and uh, Hutus, because people have these animosities all the time, the Albanians and the Serbians. My point is, instead of having them constantly meet each other and having gang fights like the Hatfields and the McCoys, I am saying very simply, the simplest and peaceful solution is live together. Them, 
No one moves. No one <laughs> yeah, moves. No, live together and everybody live under the same government. No, with not the same, the same government. Equal rights. That is 100% the easiest. Op that's the easiest. Can't the you easiest just, okay, is just to can, say can't you just at least, uh, everybody I live together with the same citizenship. You're all given the same rights. Battle it out in parliament. Go for it. It's going to be battle it out on the streets, like the Crips and the blood. I'm sure they will. There will be some violence like there usually is whenever you've kind of. Oh, why can't they just thing give, for why can't Jordan years. just give them back their, their passports and their citizenship? Why can't Israel? Yeah. Huh? Why can't Israel? Israel never gave them the passports and citizenship. Right. And it, as Israel should have. I mean, that's what but happens when you, you annex land with people. You're I don't want to Israel to people. annex that land. Why? I, you're the one who wants an ex Israel to annex You said that you land. want them to annex the land. There's all those settlements Only the there. Jewish cities. But then the Arab cities never get annexed by Israel. Why should they get annexed by Israel? Because they're they inside of Israel. Israel's going to control the airspace, the water, the telecommunications for no, those regions, won't. not Jordan. Jordan, Jordan will not will. be. So you're saying that there's going to you're going to that you think that Jordan should be allowed to build military bases inside of Israel. I think Jordan should build, build settlements just like Israel. They should all eliminate <laughs> malaria together. They should cooperate together and they should raise their children in. You know, if, if, if you want them to start let them start with their children in the same uh, childcare, okay? The same school, and then they can grow up together. That I see working, okay? Little steps, but throwing them all together when they hate each other, and there's been all this trauma, is the stupidest idea that, I, I'm sorry, it's just my opinion, when <laughs> baby steps have Jordan back no. them with a real army and a peace agreement, and then guess what? They can go work in Israel, no problem. In the end of the day, that's what I want for Crimea. That's what I want for the Basque people and the Kurdish and everybody else. Stop trying to create new states and, uh, and, and deprive people of rights. Give them a choice and you'll see they'll join the Arabs because they're Arabs. They don't want to join the Jews. They never did, even when the Jews gave them electricity. But they have. There's two million of them living inside of Israel just fine. And they wow. like it. Yes. Those are the ones that stayed. Yes. So then, the they, so then the rest can too. They were That's taught not to. They were taught to hate the Jews. No, they can. They can. You know what? I live in an Arab and Jewish neighborhood. I got plenty. Everybody around me is either from Lebanon or Israel. I'm in a highly immigrant area, uh, in particular from Israel and Lebanon. And everybody's living here just fine. Like, look, we're not. Nobody's warring with with each other. I'm eating hummus everywhere I go, <laughs> whether it be the Israelis making it or the Lebanese making it. Well, let's, and it's ho fine. let's hope let's hope one day that everybody can live under an empire. But under the Ottomans, the Christians did not live like that. Many times, I'm not okay, going to get so into. Okay, so then the Jews yeah. shouldn't then the Jews shouldn't be like okay. Then under Jews, these Muslims can't live with us. I mean, then I don't want the Jews it... to annex uh, those those cities. You do. I don't want the Jews to annex those cities. If the Muslims were so bad to the Christians, then don't let the Jews be so bad to the Muslims. Like it's. You know, we can't say, well, the, the Muslims were terrible to these Christians and then give a pass. I mean, it's, you know, so wait, like live together. These, live these together. Palestinians live under Jordan and uh, three million of them already live under Jordan. Why can't these two million on this side of the river also live under Jordan when they did? in the past what what's wrong with that then then fine uh, if you want to do it that way then you have to give the entire contiguous west bank to all Why? of jordan for That's under control mentality. and the Why? and the israelis that are living inside of that land uh eat, live now under jordan and if they want to move back to israel they can but otherwise that, they're living that under would Jordanian be slightly better law. than what is currently but why would jordan want they kicked out all the Israelis from Jerusalem. They ethnically cleansed all the Jews. The Jews were the refugees from Jerusalem. So well, again, we live Jordan in a wants... new era. We live in a new era with a new generation of people. I, right. If 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 Jordan took all of the West Bank, that's your wishful thinking. I mean, I'm I guess. fine with it. Well, no, I'm I'm fine with the two state solution. If it's like, look, you're an Israeli settlement. You're living inside of the West Bank. That's now Palestine, let's say, or Jordan, whatever, it, whichever one you think should take it over. Let's say Jordan because it's already an existing nation. Fine then you're now living in Jordan. If you don't want to live in Jordan under Jordanian laws and Jordanian rule, then move back to Israel. Otherwise, you accept it. You know what? I do it. have you're this fine. one question for you. Here. It sounds like a contradiction. On the one hand, you say, look, I went to Palestine. I had a guide. I looked how the people lived on the ground. Okay? Yeah. On the other hand, though, I'm telling you that Corey Gil Schuster literally interviews them and has done this for 20 years now. And they all tell him, like 80% of them, 90% of them, we don't want to live with the Jews. And you're saying, impose on them. I don't care what you want. And that, so. There's a contradiction here. On the one hand, you're listening. No, to no, them. I'm saying that they have to. I mean, because they, they, there has been so much conflict for so long. Um, of course, there's a lot of hatred. You know, of course, there's a lot of, especially for the group of the oppressed. I mean, it's it's upon the oppressor to correct 
the situation. It well, is why have the upon bloods Israel. and the Crips live together? Why have the bloods and the Crips in the same? I mean, that's city? you're talking. Those those two at least are equal. Israel and Palestine are not. The Crips I mean, you weren't have a, equal in the beginning. They're uh, still. The you bloods. have the bloods you have a the well, and they do still all by the way live here together. You know, they they go. You know, they're in the. You know, they're not. They're not separated why? Why through, by a wall. Why have run a state? Why have any of this happened when you have perfectly? Good I think it's really unfair to yeah. call. You know, to to like claim that all the Palestinian people are like MS thirteen. No, not all. I'm saying the terrorist organizations are the billionaires. They I mean, laugh the, all the way to the, the bank. Likud, the Likud party is a terrorist organization. Whatever. That, I, I, that I don't like Likud. Get them out. Get them both out. Would you agree? Get Hamas out. Get Likud out. But yeah, then get, all the radicals have got to go, and then they can integrate together, and they're just going to have to. Just let them get citizenship where they want. Let them choose. <laughs> That's my point. Individuals choose, but these states don't want to give them the citizenship, and then well, Israel's not offering it. You're, the, you're only focused on Israel, and I'm saying- Because they're inside country, of that land. I mean, they're, they're, everything that they've got, all their heirs, everything's controlled by Israel. Israel so cannot not, solve the it's millions It's naturally, of people. it makes sense for them to be given Israeli citizenship Israel when Israel controls absorb. everything around them right now. It won't when Jordan backs them. All, okay, last thing is I'm saying that <laughs> by now there's 6 million people or 5 million people that Ernawa is taking care of. Yeah. And I'm saying to you that the Arab League should cancel its policy, allow them to have citizenship just like Palestinians have, my friends have in the UK, in the US, in Sweden, okay? Let them live their lives. And okay. if they want, there's going to be 2% that say, no, I want to go back to my grandma's uh, olive grove that doesn't exist anymore, and I'll try to make it over there in Israel. Fine. Let those 2% go after the rest of the people get their citizenship because that is what I want for them. And that's what I would have wanted for the Jews who lived in ghettos for hundreds of years in Europe. Same thing, never integrated, being told, go back to your country. I don't want that for anybody. And I certainly don't want that for another generation of stateless Palestinians. So that's my, uh, that's my point. Greg, I appreciate you coming on and having this conversation, this debate, this conversation. What I love about you is that, you know, you are willing to have conversations even when we don't agree. Uh, there are so many people out there who are not willing to do that. And I just think it's really great that you are the type of person who, and it, you know, it makes sense you're a libertarian. I feel like libertarians are more likely to do that. I get along well with libertarians because of that. I think that they're, that, uh, you know, it's a, 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 a nice bunch of people that are willing to listen to a lot of different ideas. And it's really great that, that you're one of those people. So I do appreciate, you know, we, we are, Gonna at this point we have to end it. We're gonna have to agree to disagree, but to, you know we we agree that there needs to be a solution to the statelessness, and yes. that that is really needs to be addressed because hum, the, unfortunately we live in a world. And as a libertarian, you should be kind of against this, right? Because it is it's it's a statist mentality of your citizenship is what grants you your rights, which is kind of crazy. It should be we just all have rights. And hopefully um, we'll have network states in the future and you won't talk about borders. You'll just talk about membership. Maybe. I mean, look, I, like if I were to wave a magic wand, there would be no borders at all, in my opinion, because I, I think borders are artificial, odd. They prevent natural human migration, which I think is a natural part of human, you know, our biology, our, our way of being that we've done for, you know, millions of years or however long humans have been around, depending on who you are. Um, uh, so, you know, but, but, uh, it, but right now we live in a, we live in an era where there's borders and we kind of have to deal with it, but, but I appreciate it, Greg, where can people find you? Where do you, where do you want people to find you? You, you have a blog, you have a great blog, very informed. Um, thank you. Um, I'll put that link down below to your blog. And I think it's really interesting. People can read your anti-Zionist vo vocabulary, <laughs> your dictionary, um, a lot of good stuff there. Where, where would you like people to, to find you? I'd love for people to um, go to qbix.com, qbix.com. Okay. Uh, that link is down below as well. Yep. Yeah. Balaji Srinivasan recently invested in Qbix because he believes in the network state. I believe in creating opportunities for people to self-organize without governments, without big tech, being able to have open source software like Linux, like Wikipedia and other things. That is what leads to peace and understanding and collaboration. And if you want competition and being pitted against your neighbor and hating your neighbor because they're left, right, blue, red, passing Jewish, you know, at the end of the day, I think we're all human beings and we need to get, break free of the labels that are imposed on us. So qbix.com. Uh, and hey, we could build a community for you. So hopefully um, we can help. 
All right. Well, I also uh, put Greg's uh, Twitter link down below so you could follow him on Twitter. You can also read his blog and also go to that to go to Cubix, the website there, cubix.com. So Greg, thank you so much for for being on. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Thanks for having me on.